What's up guys, it's Sean here. Now today on The Computer Scientist, we're going to take our DQN agent that we've been building up over the last few videos and test it out on some of the other OpenAI gym environments. Now in case you haven't been watching the last few videos, basically our agent has been enhanced from a basic DQN agent to a double DQN agent that uses prioritized experience replay to sample experiences that have the largest training error. So without changing our neural network architecture, we're going to see how well our agent can adapt from the simpler cart pole environment to the more complex mountain car environment, the pendulum environment, and also the acrobat. Now, some of those environments have continuous action spaces. So I will show you a trick to discretize those action spaces so that our DQN can train on them. So going back to our Jupyter Notebook, we have the code for our double Q network and then our prioritized replay buffer for more focused sampling of unique training experiences and then our agent which manages the network and the replay buffer. Then we defined our cart pole environment that we originally built this agent for in the last videos and so I'll move this down above the training loop where we can see it. So let's actually verify that our agent does indeed work when it's trained for 100 episodes at a faster exploration decay. Now it can be a bit of a risk when we decrease our exploration too fast where the agent may not be able to learn the optimal policy in time. But because the cart pole environment already starts in a gold state with the pole upright, then the agent is still able to discover the right actions to take to keep it balanced early on in training. And we see that at about episode 60, it's getting the hang of keeping the pole balanced. And just a few more episodes later, it's reached the minimum proportion of exploration actions, and so it's pretty much solved the environment. Okay, I probably spoke a bit too soon on that one. So it seems it's learned that it has to go left to balance the pole here, but it hasn't learned that it has to go left faster than the rate the pole is falling to the left. Okay, so now I think it's finally gotten the hang of it. And now fast forwarding to preserve viewer attention. And now let's actually see how our agent adapts to some of the other environments on OpenAI Gym. So going to the environments page, let's actually take a look at the classic mountain car environment. So for this environment, the agent's goal is to drive back and forth to gain enough momentum to reach the top of the hill since its engine is too weak to drive up from rest. And each episode is 200 time steps long, where the agent receives a reward of negative 1 for each time step until it reaches the top of the hill, where it gets a reward of 0 and the episode terminates. The agent is only given its height and velocity as the state and has a choice of 3 actions to push left, do nothing or push right. So essentially when it starts off training, it only knows to do these actions in a random fashion until it discovers the goal location and observes a relatively high reward of zero. And I have a hunch that this agent isn't going to stumble on the right sequence of actions to get the momentum needed to reach the top of the hill. I would actually say it's a problem with the reward function, which being constantly negative one for all heights less than the goal height, doesn't actually give the agent any indication of how close it is to the actual goal. Okay, that was a bit of a fail, but moving on, let's try the mountain car continuous. But when we try and train it, it seems like there's an error that the env object has no attribute n. And this is because the action space is actually of type box, which is another word for continuous action space. So this means that instead of having just three choices of actions, it now has to select a negative or positive value for the pull or push force to apply to the car. But we can actually convert this to a discrete action space by specifying a number of action values at discrete intervals along the continuous action range. So let's create a class discretize DQN agent, which is the subclass of the original agent, and we'll take in the number of action intervals that we want. Then all we need to do is check if the environment has a discrete action space, and if it doesn't, we set the environment to have the n attribute of the given action size. But since our DQN outputs the action index, we need a way to convert this to the corresponding value along the continuous range, so we will define an evenly spaced list of action values for each action index. Then we can create a base function called getEnvAction that returns the action in the format that the environment requires, and then we will override that to return the action value for that index. And we just need to remember to call the getEnvAction on the action passed into the end.step function. And that's all it is. So now when we run this, we actually get no more errors. Now, knowing that this is going to take ages, I decided to leave this running and take a nap. 
And so when I came back after two hours, I am welcomed by an agent that does nothing. So what happened here? Well, if you consider the reward function, it says it only gives the agent 100 reward if it reaches the top, but it also minuses the square of the sum of the actions taken. So that means if the agent doesn't reach the top soon enough, then it'll eventually learn to minimize losses by not moving at all. Okay, now what's next? Perhaps the pendulum. This one's also continuous, where the agent needs to provide the torque value between negative 2 and positive 2 to swing the pendulum to stay up vertically upwards. And finally we have a decent reward function again, which here it is a negative reward proportional to the square of the angle difference from itself to the positive vertical, and also the square of the torque values it applies to swing itself up. So at least this time it'll see a positive increase in the reward once it swings itself upwards. So the agent is mostly just exploring for the first 50-ish episodes, so let's fast forward to the real progress. So now at this stage, the agent has an idea of how to stabilize the pendulum when it swings it up gently, but sometimes it applies the wrong torque and then loses control because it hasn't learned some of the separate actions yet. That's good indication to keep training. So at this stage it looks like the agent has pretty much solved the environment. However because of the discretization, it isn't able to apply the exact torque to keep it fully upright. Now finally the acrobot, which is also a discrete environment where the agent controls the joint between the two links and can either apply the torque clockwise or counterclockwise to build enough momentum to swing the second link above the line. Now similar to the mountain car, it gets a reward of negative one for each time step until it touches the line, and then the episode terminates. So the state consists of the sine and the cos of the angles of both joints, and it has to choose between applying a torque of either negative one, zero or positive one to the middle joint. And each episode lasts for 500 time steps this time, so we'll definitely be skipping past that exploration. So halfway in training, the agent has picked up on what it has to do, and it swings itself above the line pretty quickly now. And it's also fortunate that the episodes lasted for 500 time steps to allow the agent enough exploration of swinging upwards to reach the line. Let's keep going towards the end of training. So not much more improvement, but I'll take that to mean our agent mastered it pretty early on. Phew, that was a lot of training. And since each training loop saves the episode rewards, we can actually graph all four environments together to see how they vary. And apart from the two mountain car environments, our agent did a pretty good job at increasing its score over time. So you just saw how a single agent can be adapted to learn multiple different environments. And as you noticed with the mountain car environment, our poor double DQ and agent isn't quite able to solve those environments that require a lot of exploration. Although maybe another agent can, but that's a topic for another video. Anyways, thanks guys for watching this video. Let me know if you liked it by hitting that like button. And if you have any suggestions for other algorithms that you'd like to learn, put them in the comments below. But until next time, keep learning like a machine. Bye!